Okay, again, so let's continue with our discussion. So, um, lie detection, of course, class, this is the last part of our discussion. So, um, uh, lie detection techniques, okay? So, uh, first to read the question, si, uh, si Anna May, si Guma. Anna May? Uh, available ba si Anna May to read the question? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> The Hindu book that is the first reference on detecting deception known in history. Letter A, Administration of Truth Serum. B, Ayutthaya. C, Ayurveda. D, Samoki Layat Nanlikatan. Okay, thank you. So, okay, what is your answer, class? So, the Hindu book that is the first reference on detecting deception known in history. Uh, letter A, Administration of Truth Serum. Letter B, Ayotaya. Letter C, Ayurveda. And letter D, Samukilayad ng Likatan. Okay, what is your answer, class? Okay, what is your answer? Okay, so yan. Ayurveda. Of course, we already discussed this one yesterday. So again, ang yung uh, uh, tanatawag natin. Actually, yung dalawa na yung pwede natin sa buri. Ano dyan? Possible na answer. Administration of Jut Serum and Ayurveda. So that's why ang sagot natin, that is letter C, Ayurveda. Okay, nakuha? That is Ayurveda class. So yan. So uh, I find out pala na sa ibang mga review center, so meron pa silang tatlo na area na hindi na discuss So mabuti sa atin, no? Na isang area na lang yung hindi natin na-discuss. So uh, January pa pala nila tatapusin yung ibang area. So kasi mag -ano sila. So you are in the right uh, place. <laughs> Kumbaga, kasi di ba natapos na natin lahat ng area. Ito na lang yung natira. Yung forensic science. So hopefully, this week matapos na natin. Okay, class. Okay, yan. So uh, then, of course, uh, pag sinabi natin Ayurveda, so uh, it is a Hindu book of science and health around 500 uh, BC or before Christ class. That is considered as an earliest known reference to a method of detecting deception. So Ayurveda, walang ibang sagot niyan. That is our first um, reference. Of course, that is uh, the book on science and health, okay, around 500 uh, BC or before Christ era. Then, uh, of course, ang Ayurveda, uh, early forms of detecting deception class is known as trial uh, by ordeal or yung tanatawag natin na ordeal class. So yung uh, trial by ordeal, Yan yung uh, early forms of detecting deception whereas wala pa naman tayo di ba dating uh, system or justice system na magsasabi that, that a person committed a crime. So kung uh, yung ordeal na yun, okay, kung sino yung mananalo doon, uh, it is presumed na nagsasabi siya ng totoo or siya yung inesente. But of course that is uh, back in the uh, history. So hindi natin pwede nga na yun. Then, of course, pag sinabi natin ordeal, it means it is an old or it is an ancient trial. So, uh, whereas iba-iba yung tanatawag natin na ordeal. Ordeal by chewing or rice chewing. Diba? Kapag yung rice chewing, kapag uh, uh, yung nilunok mo, yung uh, kanin, tapos paglabas niya is um, uh, medyo, ano siya, medyo basa yung tanatawag natin. Ibig sabihin nun, nag uh, sisinungaling daw yung tao kapag ino, uh, nilabas mo naman na um, dry so meaning nagsasabi ka daw ng totoo so uh, and of course uh, we have the trial by combat kung sino yung kung sino yung uh, mananalo sa sa combat or yung sa trial by combat class yan nagsasabi ng totoo or yung um, yung accused na tinatawag natin he will face yung combatant or yung pinakamalakas sa community then kung matatalo niya yun, ibig sabihin, he is innocent. Okay, yan yung tanatawag natin na trial by combat. So it is an ancient practice of detecting deception whereby an accuser will fight against the accused or will hire a champion to fight the accused in a duel. Whoever lost the duel will be a judge guilty. So that is trial by combat. Nagawa nyo? So, yan yung tinatawag natin na trial by combat class. Again, pag sinabi natin ordeal, that is the uh, ancient trial or it means an old trial. So, that is an ordeal. Okay. So, nabalitaan ko class, maraming ano, uh, di ko alam kung nakaka-relate kayo. 
uh, maraming nagbe-message sa page natin na hina-hold daw yung ano nila yung uh, kanilang uh, TOR and then yung mga papers nila yung iba naman kahapon na nabigla ako eh uh, sa part siya ng ano kagayan kagayan ba <clears throat> ano daw class yung uh, uh, wala silang natutunan sa kanilang review center kasi wala silang freedom to choose their review center kasi ang uh, din pala nila merong review center tapos uh, ang klase lang nila Uh, Friday and Saturday tapos wala pang ano wala daw sila nakukuha wala silang natutunan mabuti na lang meron akong page doon uh, halo sila na magkaklase or yung batch doon na ano yan tinitingnan na yung uh, yung page ko yung mga upload kasi wala talaga talaga sila natutunan tapos na, na natatakot rin sila class kasi ang mahal daw ng ano sa nila eh ng bayad 15,000 yung yung whole uh, review tapos iba pa yung mga notes, di ba? So grabe, grabe yung ginagawa sa kanila. So um, maraming, nabigla ako 15,000 yung bayan sa review center lang. Tapos sa uh, every area daw class, 600 pesos yung kanilang review notes. Sabi ko grabe, dapat yung review notes na yon, nandun na yon sa 15,000. Okay, so grabe naman yung nangyayari dyan sa ano. Tapos ang problema, hindi sila natuturuan ng maayos. Okay, sige lang, i-share ko yun mamaya sa Facebook. Kasi ano lang, two days lang doon yung review nila tapos hindi pa maganda yung natuturo. Wala talaga silang natutunan. Tapos na, 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 uh, ngayon, na problema sila malapit na yung board exam. Wala pa rin sila tapos wala silang freedom ba. Okay, so kaya medyo kawawa naman. Uh, marami pa lang ganun, no? <laughs> nag-overthink na makarami kayo. Marami pa lang ganun class na ano grabe yung ginagawa ng ibang mga mga deans and mga review set, mga ano yung mga heads ng schools. Uh, pero of course sana wag uh, dapat hindi ganun, okay? Ba dapat may freedom kayo to choose your review center. Okay, to choose uh, tapos makapag uh, dapat marilis na lang yung kanilang yung yung papers ninyo tapos malapit madali na malapit na matapos ang filing no so dapat uh, ano class but of course don't worry class kapag hindi kayo maka makatake ngayong February kung yung ayaw talaga nila oh, may, meron pa namang iba oh, marami pa namang batch <laughs> but of course dapat ano niyo sila uh, sige lang awareness yan sa mga ano eh sige lang ipo-post ko mamaya sa page ko grabe Grabe ang nangyayari talaga pala sa criminology. Every day yun yung natatanggap ko na ano ng students. Uh, parang uh, ano, wala talaga silang freedom kasi ano eh, imagine na uh, sa review nila abutin yung sa review center mga 20,000, no 20,000 no. 20,000 tapos wala kayong matutunan kasi nag uh, Friday and Saturday lang tapos yung mga kinukuhang lecturer wala walang ano walang uh, yung tinuturo wala daw so grabe uh, yung mga basic wal well, hindi nila alam so magte na sila ng board exam sa February wala pa talaga hindi pa nasimulan yung mga area wala nang manatapos or yung uh, pulido ah uh, medyo nakakabahala kasi ang dami kong gano'n na natatanggap sa ano sa page kung na, nagpapa-advise sila kung ano yung gagawin nila so pero of course hindi ko naman maano yon kahit sabihin ko na reklamo nila pero of course marami pa ring ano uh, di ba marami pa ring ano. pero of course dapat class rights niyo yun na mag-review sa labas kung uh, uh, kahit sabihin nila na may review center ako di na ako di ba may review center ako sa akin kay mag-review paano naman yung quality di ba so dapat ganun class pero sige lang ipo-post ko yun para ma-aware yung lahat kapag uh, may ganun na ginagawa pala di ba imagine na uh, ganon 15,000 plus review materials per area 600 o di ba bakit hindi bibenta yung ano review materials di ba uh, 600 times 6 3 uh, uh, 6 times 36 36 pa so mga aabot talaga ng 20 plus <laughs> more or less yung magiging ano nila pero sana hindi yon ano hindi yon siya ngito hindi ma hindi aabot ng ganung class. Okay, so yan. Hopefully class maka-exam kayo talaga ngayong ano February. So yan. So again, the scientific methods of detecting deception class. Of course, we have the uh, polygraph test. Of course, uh, alam na alam natin, we have the polygraph test. 
Uh, second dyan, we have the use of alcoholic beverages. So, of course, uh, in vino veritas, ibig sabihin, in wine, there is truth. So, uh, it is presumed kapag you are under the influence of alcohol, so meaning daw yan, uh, nang magsasabi ka talaga ng totoo, but then again, it, it does not apply to all, di ba? May uh, merong uh, under the influence of alcohol, but then again, hindi pa rin, sinungaling pa rin. So, use of alcoholic beverages. Then we have the narco analysis. Of course, ang narco analysis that is the uh, with the use of uh, administration of drug serum, uh, use of narcotic or anesthetic drugs. Of course, kapag sinabi natin narcotics, uh, it will induce you to sleep. Okay, papatulugin ka niya. Ang anesthetic naman, uh, loss of feeling. Ibig sabihin, wala kang maramdaman. Ang throat serum, of course, uh, with the use of pentotal or tiopintal class. Okay, that's why ang throat serum or yung uh, chemical na ginagamit class in the uh, death uh, penalty through uh, what they call the uh, lethal injection is tinatawag natin na pentotal or tiopintal. Uh, kasi that is combination of narcotics and anesthetic. Papatulugin ka niya, then mawalan ka ng feeling. So parang wala lang, you, you, you die uh, peacefully. So yun yung mag magiging epekto class kapag uh, lethal injection yung magiging uh, punishment mo as a death penalty. Okay? Then, of course, fourth, we have the word association test or what. Okay, ibig sabihin, uh, there are group of words, objects, or photographs will be presented and there is a time pressure. Uh, ibig sabihin, naka, ano yun siya, class, hindi naka in order. Ipapakita niya ngayon, tapos uh, para malalaman niya kung uh, familiar ba siya or hindi. So, uh, ma ano niya daw, uh, kumbaga, kapag hindi siya familiar or hindi siya master doon sa mga pinapakita mo, paulit-ulit, so there are, uh, there are possibility daw na nagsasabi or nag nagsisinungalin siya. That is the word association test. Then, of course, we have the uh, hypnotism. Of course, pag sinabi natin uh, hypno uh, hypnosis, okay, uh, uh, parang hinihypnotize ka kasi ibig sabihin, uh, kahit nakatulog ka, nagsasalita ka, or nagre-response ka to the given question. So that is the use of hypnotism. Or there is an hypnosis na nangyayari. Okay? That is the scientific methods of detecting deception. Okay? So yan, class. So medyo nakakawawa rin yung ano, no? Yung magtitake ng board exam na may review center nga or walang review center na walang access o hindi sigurado sa mga ano nila. So medyo... Kaya um, as much as possible, nag-upload talaga ako ng mga short videos ano, para makita ano rin nila. So yun na yung magagamit nila kas, kasi yun na yung ginagawa ng mga nakaraang mga ano eh. So lahat ng videos ko uh, na nakapost sa board sa Facebook, uh, pinanood nila class. So, uh, then uh, most like uh, mga ano, lahat halos pumasa talaga yung nakadiscover ng page ko. Okay, dito tayo. Okay, please uh, read the question. Si uh, Binuya, Hana. Hana, please. Okay, yes, yes. Narinig natin. Okay, sige. What is the normal blood pressure, systolic and diastolic, of a person subject to a polygraph test? A, 100 over 50. B, 120 over 80. C, 150 over 90. D, 120 over 90. Okay, so what is your answer, class? On the comment section, please. Okay, so what is your answer sa comment section? Okay, bakit walang sa walang sumasagot sa comment section? Hindi niyo alam yung normal. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so let's answer. So what is the normal blood pressure? Pag sa naman natin systolic class, ibig sabihin that is the upper blood pressure. Ang diastolic naman, that is the lower blood pressure of a person subject to, to a polygraph test. Of course, that is... Uh, okay. That is 120 over 80. That is the normal blood pressure. Yung 120, that is the systolic. Of course, that is the upper blood pressure. And the systolic naman, that is 80. That is the uh, the lower blood pressure. Okay? So, yan yung normal uh, blood pressure class when a person is subject to a polygraph test. 120 over 80. Okay, next. Uh, we have the matching uh, matching type here. Okay, so medyo... Uh, medyo ano tayo dito, no? Medyo ma... Ano. Okay, pag sinabi natin pneumograph class, what is pneumograph? Number one. Ano yung sagot niya dito pag sinabi natin pneumograph? What is pneumograph? Ano na lang? Uh, uh, dito na lang. Uh, so, explain ko na lang uh, dito. So, sa next slide para hindi tayo matagalan, no? Uh, okay ba? Okay lang? I-explain ko direct? Yes, sir. Okay, sige. Para maano natin. Okay, dito tayo class. Ito yung sagot natin. So, mamaya ibalikan nyo yung video natin para mas ma-retain. So, tanda niyo pag sinabi natin pneumograph, of course, that is uh, respiration or breathing. Di ba? Ang pneumograph is one of the major or key components of the polygraph machine that measures the respiration or breathing. While ang cardiospemograph naman, of course, that is uh, that measures the heartbeat or pulse rate. Cardio, di ba? Then, of course, we have the galbano, of course, uh, it measures the skin resistance or the skin conductivity. Then, we have the convoluted tube. Ang convoluted tube class, tandaan nyo, that is uh, 10 inches long. We have the polygram, of course. Ang polygram na tinatawag natin class, yan yung ginagamit natin na polygraph paper in a polygraph machine. Again, ang tawag doon sa papel na ginagamit natin class in a polygraph machine that is polygraph paper or the polygraph na tinatawag natin. Then, yung recording pen unit that is uh, 5 inches long. Again, yung recording 5 units, uh, pen units that is 5 and inches. Then, pag sinabi, pag na-encounter nyo yung X or single X, ibig sabihin, that is the start of the test. While the double X naman, that is uh, that means that is the end of the test. Ibig sabihin, tapos na. Then, of course, the guild complex test. Um, guild complex test or the GCP uh, test natin, of course, kailangan natin ng verbal response to determine if the subject is telling the truth or telling the lies. Then, we have the silent answer test. Of course, from the word itself, silent. So, meaning, uh, it is intended for unresponsive subject. Ibig sabihin, it does not uh, said uh, something or says something that is the silence answer test. Okay, nakuha? So, ito yung uh, matching type natin class. Again, yan yung tanda nyo dito. Kasi you already know the pneumograph, cardio, and galvano. So, dito ang focus ninyo. Okay? So, ang convoluted tube, 10 inches long, polygraph machine, that is yung polygraph, uh, polygraph paper na tawag natin, that is polygram, recording pen unit, 5 inches, ang uh, single X, that is the start of the test, and double X, that is the end of the test. And the guild complex test, kailangan natin ng verbal answer. Ang silent answer test naman, that is intended for unresponsive subject. Okay. Dito tayo, class. So, we have the development of the polygraph. Of course, class, in 1895, si Cesar Lombroso, siya yung first na nakaisip or conceived the idea of utilizing scientific lie detection that is known as hydrospemograph. That's why, class, ang father ng uh, hydrospemograph is si Cesar Lombroso in 1895. Then, uh, dumating si uh, Angelo Mosso still on 1895. Ang, ang, ang study naman ni Angelo Mosso, naka-focus yung importance ng fear as a strong influence to deception. Okay, that's why, class, kapag ang subject is in fear uh, during the conduct of a polygraph test, uh, meron talagang stimulus or stimuli na mag, uh, mag um, lalabas, di ba? Meron at merong lalabas na stimulus or stimuli na magsasabi that the person is at telling the, 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 the telling lies. But then again, uh, big factor kasi ang fear. Of course, uh, di ba kapag uh, hindi ka nagsisunungaling, it is presumed naman talaga na hindi ka kabahan. 
kapag kinakabahan ka, ibig sabihin, there is something wrong. Baka hindi ka nagtatabi ng totoo. But that is the, hindi naman natin lahat, nila lahat, guys. Kasi meron talagang, uh, kahit konting ano lang, kinakabahan yung tao. So again, ang Angelo Mosso, sa fear naman ang focus niya. Si uh, William Marston naman, class, uh, he made use of spigmo manometer, spigmo manometer, and focus on the importance of systolic blood pressure or yung upper, upper blood pressure natin. Then we have the systolic, of course, that is the upper blood pressure, and the systolic is the lower blood pressure. Yung uh, normal systolic class or upper blood pressure that is 120, and the systolic naman that is the normal uh, diastolic blood pressure or the lower blood pressure. That is in the development of the polygraph. Okay, dito naman tayo. So, of course, class, kapag tinanong sa board exam, who is the father of polygraphy, that is uh, William Marston. Again, the father of polygraphy, is Sir William Marston. So, ang gagawin niya dyan, na acronym is FAMA. So, meaning, ang father of polygraph machine is si Marston. Again, ang, uh, ang gagamitin niyo na acronym dyan is FAMA. Father Marston. Na, na, nasundan niyo Nasundan? So, William Marston is the father of polygraphy. Then, of course, we have the uh, Leonard Killer. Si Sir Leonard Killer naman, class, siya naman yung father of modern polygraphy. Again, the father of modern polygraphy is si Leonard Killer. So, chemo naman. Chemo. So, meaning killer that is modern. Okay? So, fama chemo. Nampang niyo, class? So, fama ibig sabihin... The father of polygraphy, si Marston, kemo naman. Killer is the modern father or the father of modern polygraphy. Fama, kemo. Then, of course, uh, si John Larson. Okay, of course, that is uh, 1921, uh, the birth year of polygraphy. Then, uh, of course, yung bride, uh, bread lie detector, uh, he invented the first lie detector, si John Larson. Then si Otto Veragut, okay, so, uh, si Otto Veragut class, he formulated the psychogalvanic uh, skin reflex or yung tinatawag natin na uh, PGSR. Again, the uh, psychogalvanic skin reflex, that is the PCGR, PCGSR. Then of course, si uh, Richard O. Arthur, siya naman yung nag-formulate ng two galvanic skin resistance na naroon natin sa GSR natin to measure the skin conductivity. Then, uh, si James uh, Mackenzie, of course, he is a British specialist. Ang kanya namang na-introduce sa atin is the ink polygraph. Again, Sir James Mackenzie, he is a British heart specialist that introduced the ink polygraph naman. Okay, so yan, matching uh, number five. Okay, matching number five. So, I will uh, continue na lang so para mas madali ninyong maano. Okay, dito tayo, class. Explain natin. So uh, kapag mayroong padding question o uh, kapag may padding question class ibig sabihin kailangan natin yun yung mga unnecessary words na idadagdag natin that is not connected with the matter or with the subject matter that is a padding question ang galvanometers na tinatawag natin class yun yung finger plates na, na nilagay dito sa ating mga kamay then of course uh, we have the irrelevant question those are the basic question na tinatawag natin in a polygraph test. Ang red line naman, yung red line, ang purpose niya is for propaganda para sirain yung isang uh, tao or yung isang company or is yung isang uh, uh, yung isang partido. Then we have the black liar he is an hypocrite. Okay, walang kailam. Okay, kahit may mamatay. Then white lies naman, of course, that is to protect someone. Okay, to protect someone para wala na magkagulo. Hindi na magkagulo. Then, ang pre-test, of course, the first, uh, first uh, test in a polygraph test. Then, ang actual test, of course, tinatawag natin yan na instrumentation. Ang uh, finger electrode, of course, uh, ang finger electrodes class, nilalagay natin yan sa left index finger and, of course, the ring finger. Okay? Left index finger and ring finger. Then, we have the blood pressure, of course, that is nilalagay yan sa upper right arm natin. Nakuha? Ang blood pressure, that is yung handcuff, that is sa blood pressure or sa upper right arm ang nilalagay yung ganon. Para ma-measure ang blood pressure. Okay, nakuha? So dito tayo. Uh, hmm? 
So after ni Hana si si Sir uh, Kader, Kader. Available ba si Sir Kader to answer? Okay, so wala, ay wala. Um uh, next uh si Dan. How about Dan? Uh Dan na John si Dan. Yes, sir. Okay, so okay, si Dan, go ahead. He was accorded the distinction of being the first person to utilize an instrument for the purpose of detecting lies called hydrospimograph A. Angelo Mosso, B. Vittorio Binosi, C. Leonard Killer, D. Cesar Lambroso. Okay, so yeah, what is your answer, class? A comment section. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. Bakit marami daw hinuhold na ano na TOR? Okay, so ayan, ano nangyayari na? Okay, so he was accorded the distinction of being the first person to utilize an instrument for the purpose of detecting lies called hydrospimograph. Of course, obviously, that is Cesar Lombroso, hydrospimograph. Okay, next. Uh, let's explain. Okay, so medyo mahaba to klasa. Ah, uh, sige. Uh, sino yung magbabasa nito? After ni Dan, uh, si, ano na lang, si, uh, si Giselle. Giselle? Giselle? Nandiyan si Giselle? Wala? Uh, okay. How about si, ano, Vertodazo? Ay, ay nasa biyay pa. How about Vertodazo? Vertodazo? Yes. Okay, so makinig kayo class ha, kasi yung uh, ano na to, uh, facts to lahat, marami kayo makukuha dito. Sige, go ahead. William M. Markston, known as the father of polygraph, a, com a comic book creator of Wonder Woman, was the creator of the systolic blood pressure test, which became one component of the modern polygraph invented by John Larson in Berkeley, California. In 1921. In 1906, we find the first mention of a polygraph instrument in an article for the British journal Lancet. This was described in polygraph. A heart surgeon used this polygraph when giving medical examinations, although never used as an instrument for detecting deception. It is first known instrument which contained the essential features of present day instrument who is this heart specialist okay so yan kung titingnan niyo class ang haba-haba ng tanong di ba okay so ulitin natin na si William M Marston nor known as the father of the uh, polygraph okay that is one point nasundan niyo nasusunod niyo ako class that is one fact okay a comic book creator of Wonder Woman. Siya rin yung nag-create ng, uh, ng, ng book na Wonder Woman. Of course, was the creator of the systolic blood pressure test. Okay, isa pa yan. Which became one component sorry, of the modern polygraph 
invented by John Larson in Berkeley, California in 1921. So in 1906, we find the first mention of polygraph instrument in an article for the British journal Lancet. Okay, so yan, isang point na naman yan. This was described as the ink polygraph. Again, a heart surgeon used this polygraph when giving medical examination, although never used as uh, an instrument for detecting deception. So it is first known instrument which contain the essential features of a present-day instrument this heart surgeon is. Sino yung tawag natin na surgeon na yung class? Okay, is that uh, Leonard Killer, William Marston, James Mackenzie, or Clive Baxter? Okay, what is your answer? What is your answer? Sino yung heart surgeon na yun, class? Again, sino yung heart surgeon? Okay, bakit walang sagot? Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, class, that is si James Mackenzie. That is letter C. Very good. Okay, so si James Mackenzie, yung heart surgeon class na... Okay, so si uh, James Mackenzie yung heart surgeon that contain the essential element features of the present-day heart specialist. Okay, so yan yung class. Okay, yan yung... Um, it is first known instrument, yung uh, detecting deception. Of course, that is yung... Uh, Yung uh, heart specialist na yan is si James uh, Mackenzie. That is letter C. Okay, tanda nyo kapag si uh, Leonard Killer, he developed the chemograph. That's why diba, we have the uh, chemograph, chemo, killer. He was, uh, it was credited before him and the killer's polygraph in 1926. So kaya that's why we have the killer's polygraph in 1926. Ang uh, William Marston, the father of polygraphy, uh, the father of polygraphy rather, Okay, Marston. And si Clay Baxter class, ang um, kanya namang na-introduce is the mo uh, numerical scoring and zone comparison test technique. Okay, so yan. Si Leonard Killer, uh, chemograph, and uh, we have the killer's uh, polygraph in 1926. Si uh, William Marston, the father of polygraphy. Then ang, uh, ang uh, si Killer is the modern. Then si Clay Baxter, of course, ang na-introduce naman class, is the numerical scoring and zone comparison test technique naman. Okay? So, yan. Okay. So, dito tayo. After ni, uh, ni uh, Bertadaso, next, Lawrence. Lawrence? Lawrence, to read the question? Yes, sir. Okay. The following are major components of lie detector machine, except letter A, chemograph, B, pneumograph, C, galvanograph, D, hydrophemograph. Okay. So what is your answer, class? We already discussed this one yesterday. So I'm sure alam na alam nyo to.
Okay. Of course, class, ang sagot natin dyan, that is, okay, that is uh, chemograph. Okay. So, bakit chemograph, class? Actually, dalawa yung um, ano natin ang pwedeng sagot dyan. Chemograph and hydrospemograph. Since the first uh, letter na nag-appear dyan, okay, For, since the first letter na nag-appear dyan is uh, what we call wrong spelling or wrong spelling, wrong answer, siya yung isa sagot natin. Again, class, yung uh, dalawang tamang sagot na nag-appear, yung first uh, answer na tama, yun yung isagot ninyo. Kapag dalawa naman yung dalawang baling sagot na magkasunod yung first to appear, that is your answer. Okay, that is chemograph. Kasi si uh, Neumo and Galvano, they are the major components. Ang chemograph naman, components lang ang tawag natin dyan. Okay, so yan. So that is uh, what they call the uh, pneumograph and galvanograph. Okay. So yan. Hmm. So dito tayo. Okay. So next to answer, after ni uh, Lawrence, si uh, Jamaica. Jamaica, are you there? Jamaica. Wala? Okay. How about Latif? Latif? Uh, si Sir Lemuel ata naka-duty. Si uh, Oppo, CPH, Oppo? Wala. <laughs> sino, to, si, sino to si Oppo, class? Uh, how about Stephen? Stephen? Nandiyan si Stephen? Yes, sir. Ah, sige, sige. Pakibasa. Polygraph was invented in 1921 by John Augustus Larson, a medical student at the University of California, Brick and a police officer of the Berkeley Police Department in Berkeley, California. It is a component of polygraph machine which is a small motor which pull or drive the chart paper known as polygram at the rate of 6 inches per minute. A. Neumograph. B. Hemograph. C. Pen and inking system. D. Cardio section. Okay, thank you. So, okay, class, what is your answer? Okay, so let's answer this one. Okay, so we bakit isa lang yung sa ano natin. So uh, the polygraph was invented in 1921 by Jan Augustus Larson, a medical student at the University of California, Berkeley, and a police officer of the Berkeley uh, Police Department in uh, Berkeley, California. It is a component of a polygraph machine, which is a small motor, again, again, motor, which pull or drive the chart paper known as the polygram at the rate of six inches per minute. Okay, what is your answer? Okay, and I explained it kahapon na motor, it serves as the motor. Okay, basically, that is a uh, chemograph. Okay, again, uh, chemograph. So again, let's focus on the keyword. Okay, so yeah. Okay, chemograph. Nakuha ba? Nakuha ninyo? Okay. Okay, very good. So next, uh, hmm. ganun lang kadali class ang magsagot kapag okay. How about uh, dito tayo class, uh, matching number 6. Okay, number, um, matching number 6. Pakibasa nga ulit dito yung... Um, Yung uh, dito, uh, then of course, yung sagot dito. Okay, si, uh, balik tayo sa una, yung uh, ano natin. Okay, 
pakibasa uh, anime anime pakibasa Lahat, sir. Ah, yes, yes. Para mas ma ano sa inyo. One, false positive. Two, false negative. Three, button. Four, ay, positive button. Five, skin conductivity. Six, pneumograph. Pneumograph one, seven, pneumograph two. Eight, pin and ink inking system. Nine, Fry test then Dovert standard. Okay, so Letter yeah. Ay, okay, na uh, choices pa. Letter A yes, B no, C deceptive, D truthful, E chest, F abdominal, G GSR, H scientific test, I examiner, and letter G permanent record. Okay, so dito pa si explain natin. Okay. So, pag sinabi natin false positive plus, ibig sabihin, it came out to be deceptive. Okay? Ibig sabihin, hindi naman nangyayari or hindi nagsasabi na to Deceptive yan. Pag sinabi natin false negative, that is truthful, while yung uh, negative button or yung two negative button, ibig sabihin, the answer of the subject is no. Uh, two positive button or plus plus button, that is uh, yes. Okay? Well, uh, the skin conductivity class, that is the skin resistance or the galvanic skin reflex. Ang pneumograph 1 class, okay, ang pneumograph 1 sa tinatawag natin niya na chest. Wait, where is your chest class, okay? So, sundan nyo ha, dito yung chest ninyo. That is the pneumograph 1 sa chest. Ang uh, pneumograph 2 naman sa abdomen, dito sa baba. Nakuha niyo? So, pneumo 1, pneumo 2, okay? Then, tapos, uh, uh, ano kasi class? Ganito ah. So, uh, meron ba kayong na dyan? Pwede kayong magkapag-open ng, ng, ng camera? Or hindi pwede? Hindi kayo pwede maka-open ng camera class? Kasi mag-execute tayo mamaya eh. Dito sa, ano, yung sa pneumograph. Para mas madali ninyong malaman. Then, ang uh, pneumograph 2, that is what we call abdominal. Okay, so yan. Then we have the pen and inking system, permanent record of the test, ang fry test, scientific test, ang the word examiner. Ganito class. Okay, uh, so tanda ninyo class, kapag uh, sa polygraph or sa lie detection na subject, katawan nyo lang ang gamit nyo dyan. How to determine. Kapag uh, uh, pag sinabi natin pneumograph 1, ibig sabihin, tapag ka nananong, uh, saan matatagpuan ang pneumograph 1 that is a chest. Ang pneumograph 2 sa abdomen, Yung pneumograph 3, ay, ay, sorry, uh, P1, P2, cardio, and of course, the galvano. Ibig sabihin, dito, no? Okay, ito yung uh, galvano natin. Mm. Uh, index, and uh, of course, the ring finger. So again, ulitin natin. Pag sinabi natin P1, that is the chest. Uh, P2, that is the abdomen. Cardio, ito yun. Then of course, the galvano. That is yung, uh, ano ninyo, dito yung galvano class. Dito ilalagay si galvanic skin reflex. Nasundan ba ninyo dyan? Na nakikita ninyo yung ano ko? Nasundan ninyo? Bakit ko lang sumasagot? Uh, na nasundan ninyo? Nasundan? Uh, again ha? Uh, again, pag sinabi natin, uh, okay, pag sinabi natin pneumograph 1, that is a chest, ang pneumograph 2 sa abdomen, then uh, cardio, then of course galvano. So yun lang class, ang dali-dali yan. Okay, so yun. Okay, dito tayo. So next to answer, uh, si Hana. Hana, please read the question. Yes po, sir. Okay. Did you shot Mr. Dino Ficolo is, is an example of what kind of question? A, relevant. B, relevant. C, control. D, general. Okay, so did you shot Mr. Dino Ficolo is an example of what kind of question? Okay, so what question is that? Did you shot Mr. Dino Piccolo? Okay, ang sagot natin dyan, of course, that is a relevant question. Pag sinabi natin relevant question, class, ibig sabihin, that is connected to the case or to the, that is connected to the case in issue or to the matter being questioned. So that's why it is a relevant question. Okay, do we have the types of questions here? 
So of course, we have the relevant, that is the key questions or that is related or that is connected to the case and we choose that is the relevant question. Pag sinabi natin types of relevant question class, we have the strong relevant question and we have the weak relevant question. Ang strong relevant question is directly proving the guilt of the subject. Again, ang strong relevant question it directly proving the guilt of the subject. Ang weak relevant naman, indirectly proving the guilt of the subject. So that is the weak relevant. And of course, we have the knowledge, and there's a weak, ah, evidence connecting and the sacrifice. So ang tanda nyo lang dyan, between sa relevant, uh, kapag sa naman relevant question, it is a key question that is related or that is connected to the case or to the, to the matter being questioned. Ang strong relevant, directly proving the guilt of the person or the subject while the weak relevant indirectly. Okay? So, yan. Ang strong relevant, did you shot Mr. Dino Piccolo? That is a strong relevant question. Kasi again, directly proving the guilt of the subject. Uh, are you there? Or are you in the uh, place of the yung, ba, yung crime scene during that time? that uh, Dino Piccolo was killed. So that is weak relevant. Uh, still, you are trying to prove the guilt, but it is indirectly. So that is weak relevant ang tawag natin the class. Again, pag sinabi ting relevant question, it is a key question or it is related to the questions or related to the facts in issue. Nakuha ba? Naintindihan nyo? Naintindihan children. <laughs> okay na? Okay na? Okay na ba? Okay, so walang sumasagot, ha? Yes, coach. Okay, sige. Thank you. Okay, next. Dito tayo. Dito naman, class, sa, sa control question natin. Ang control question, class, it is a combination or it is either relevant or irrelevant. Again, ang control question, it is either relevant or irrelevant question. It is designed to establish the response from an innocent subject. Again, ang control question that is intended for an innocent subject, whereas, tinatawag rin natin yan na comparative response question. Again, ang other term for control question, that is comparative response uh, question. Okay? So, control question. Then, of course, we have the number three. Ang number three, that is irrelevant question. Pag sinabi natin irrelevant question, that is a neutral question that is answerable by yes. Okay? So, that is the irrelevant question. Pag sinabi natin irrelevant, ibig sabihin that is not connected to the case or that is not connected to the issue. So that is irrelevant question. Okay? Then we have class the uh, color coding according to Baxter when it comes or pagdating sa tinatawag natin na question. Of course, we have the green zone. Ang green zone, of course, that is the control question. Tanda nyo ha? Uh, green zone that is control question. Ang red zone naman, that is relevant questions. And of course, the black zone, that is symptomatic question. Again, ang green zone, control. Ang red zone naman, class, relevant questions. And the black zone is symptomatic questions. Be familiarized or familiarize that one. Okay. Dito tayo sa matching number seven. Please read the uh, done. Done. Pakibasa muna ng ating questions and doing choices. Nandiyan ba si Dan? Dan, baka nakatulog ka na, Dan. Nakatulog na ba? Okay, uh, wala, baka wala si Dan. Uh, pero nandiyan ko naman siya. How about Giselle? Giselle? Nandiyan na si Giselle? Wala. Okay, Berto Dazo. Berto Dazo, pakibasa. Berto Dazo. <laughs> One, CGP components. Two, key and PIS. Three, what? IWA Four, Vino Veritas. Five, control test. Six, relevant. Question. Polygraph. Weak, relevant. Ten, strong. A delayed answer. B wine truth. 
si circumstantial evidence. D, red color. E, green color. F, blue color. G, direct question. H, indirect question. I, detecting components. J, recording components. Thank you. Okay, wait lang. Wait lang class, uh, a minute lang. Okay, may puntan na. Sa labas na. Okay, so yan. Okay, so uh, let's answer dito sa kabila class. Okay, so pag sinabi natin uh, CGP or the uh, what we call the cardio, galvano, and the uh, pneumograph components class. Take note, ang uh, cardio, galvano, and the uh, pneumo, pneumo components class, tinatawag lang natin sila na detecting components. Again, yung uh, CGP components, ang tawag natin dyan, is detecting components. Again, so we have the CGP components. Ang tawag natin dyan is the detecting components. While yung uh, tinatawag natin na chemograph class and the pen and inking system or the PIS, tinatawag natin yan na recording components. While the number three, we have the what. Ang what class, tinatawag natin yan na word association test. Again, ang what, the word association test, uh, ang kailangan natin dyan is yung delayed answer. So, ang uh, vino veritas, of course, in wine, there is truth. Then, of course, pag sinabi natin control test, that is uh, blue color, tanda nyo ha, ah, ang control test, that is blue color, ang relevant question naman, it directly proves okay, uh, the guilt of the uh, person. So, kailangan natin ng direct question. Ang irrelevant naman, of course, that is kailangan natin ng indirect question which is hindi siya connected sa case or sa issue. Then, ang uh, polygraph test. Okay, ang polygraph test, that is a circumstantial evidence. Kailangan natin ng circumstantial evidence. Kailangan ibig sabihin, yung mga circumstances or mga statement o yung mga pangyayari, pagtagpi-tagpiin yun para masasabi natin na nagsasabi ba ng totoo o hindi. Then we have the weak relevant, green color, and the strong relevant, red color. Yan class. Ulitin natin, uh, we have the cardio, the uh, galvano, and of course we have the pneumo, that is the uh, detecting deception in a polygraph machine. While yung uh, letter K, yung uh, chemograph, and of course the pen and inking system, that is the recording components. Then we have the what or the word association test na tinatawag natin that is the delayed answer. Ang in vino veritas, in wine, there is truth. Ang control question class, that is the blue color, ang relevant question. Of course, direct question in class, directly uh, or connected to the case in issue or to the connected to the case. Ang relevant naman, indirect question. Ang polygraph test, kailangan natin ang tinatawag natin na circumstantial evidence to to prove that the person is telling the truth or telling lies. Then ang weak relevant, kailangan natin of course ng green color. And of course, ay green color yan class, ang strong relevant naman, of course that is red color. Okay? So yeah. Okay, so we have the types of test. Of course, we have the general question test for the GQT class. Ang uh, GQT consist yan ng series of relevant and irrelevant questions. Sabihin para, of course, hindi malaman or baka, ma baka matest mo, di ba? Baka doon sa irrelevant, maybe irrelevant yan doon sa umamin. So it is, uh, yung question na yan, it is planned in order. Ibig sabihin, 
meron kang checklist na sinusunod. 1 to 10. Okay? Dapat hindi ka pwedeng mag uh, pumunta sa number 5 kung hindi ka pa dumaan sa number 1. So that is the general question test. Plinano yan. Okay? So it is a consist of a relevant and irrelevant question in a planned order or in a planned manner. So that is general question test. Then we have the peak of question test. So ang peak of question test, kailangan natin yung uh, that is the padding question. Use of unnecessary words. Ibig sabihin, wala namang, hindi naman connected or unnecessary, hindi naman dapat kailangan before and after the relevant question para hindi niya malaman na yung ano niya pala is relevant or irrelevant. Okay, so yan. The peak of question test. Okay, so yan. Okay, so yan. Uh, yan yung peak of question test. Then we have the card test. Ang card test class, ang subject is presented with seven previously numbered card, uh, card face down. Okay, para malalaman kung uh, yung consistency. Okay, cons consistency, that is the card test. Okay, that is the card test. Okay, the subject is presented with uh, seven previously numbered card uh, face down. That is card test class. Then, uh, of course, uh, meron tayong uh, guilt complex test. Ang guilt complex test class that is primarily used for overly responsive subject. Okay? For kung mga masyadong active, masyadong hyper. So, that is the guilt complex uh, test. Okay? So, guilt complex test. Then, of course, we have the silent answer test. Very important or very obvious naman ang silent answer test. Uh, when the subject is instructed not to give verbal answer, so the subject will answer through his mind. Ibig sabihin, dapat walang marinig na sinasabi ng subject. Okay, so yan ang silent answer test. So yan, lalabas na na muna si, ano, si okay. So again, ang silent answer test, kailangan natin ng walang or walang verbal answer. Ang yes test naman, class, ibig sabihin, all yes answer lang. Hindi siya pwede mag-no kasi yes test. Eh. Then of course, ang no test, all no answer. Okay, so yun. Then uh, meron pa tayong tinatawag na mixed test. Of course, ang, uh, ang mixed test, the arrangement of the first and the third question. Okay? So it is an administered response or an earlier test or to compare the degree of reaction between relevant and control question. So that is the mixed test. Okay? So mixed test ang tawag natin yun. Arrangement of the first and third question. Okay, so we have the kinds of response. So we have the normal response. Ang normal response uh, has no beard. Uh, wala yung, uh, ano, walang effect yan or bearing on the matter. So, under investigation, normal response class, walang changes to the uh, responses or walang changes to the stimuli that is a normal response. Ang specific response naman class has a direct bearing on the matter. So, which contains deviations or signs of deception. Ibig sabihin, there are changes. Ibig sabihin, class, ang changes na yon or stimulus na yon class, ang response na yon posible na it is a sign or it is a, it is a deviation or baka nagsisnungaling siya. That is specific response. Then, of course, we have the types of lies. So, we have the direct denial. So, ang direct denial that is results to emotional disturbance, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi pa siya, uh, wala siya sa tamang, uh, of course, emotional, kumbaga baka, Uh, meron stress, frustration na pinagdadaanan ng subject. Okay, ang lie of omission naman class that is commonly used because it is easy to tell. Uh, nakuha mo ba yung ano ko, yung yung uh, yung wallet ko or kinuha mo ba yung damit ko? Ay wala. Okay, kumbaga agad-agad. Okay, that is commonly uh, used because it is easy to tell. A uh, lie of omission. Ang lie of exaggeration naman used by a person who overlaps what actually happened. Halimbawa, na ano lang, halimbawa, na tawag nito, nung gumawa yung anong lumindol, uh, ay, uh, marami bang namatay? Oo, 100 person ang namatay, pero 10 lang pala. Okay? So that is lies of exaggeration. Ibig sabihin, over, no? Overacting <laughs> or over yung nangyari. So that is lie of exaggeration. 
Ang lie of minimization naman, ibig sabihin, it involves acceptance of a person that something happened but downplays the implication or seriousness of the offense. Halimbawa, ganito class, ang lie of minimization. So, uh, uh, ay, hindi ako pumasa sa board exam. Ganito, ganyan. Bakit hindi ka pumasa sa board exam? Sabi mo, okay lang kasi marami naman kami hindi pumasa. Okay? So, that is the lie of minimization. Inaccept mo na na hindi ka pumasa sa board exam kasi nga kulang yung preparation mo. Then again, pero you downplay the implication. Po. Parang ginagaslight mo yung sarili mo. Ay, okay lang. Uh, okay lang na hindi ako pumasa kasi marami naman kami. Okay? So that is the lie of minimization. Okay? You downplay the application of seriousness of the offense. Ibig sabihin, dapat uh, magagalit yung sarili mo. No? Pero but of course, kapag uh, in case class, hindi kayo pala rin sa first take ninyo. Of course, lahat naman sana I'm praying kasi na 100% kayo. So, kung hindi kayo pala rin, of course, marami pang takes yan. Okay? So, huwag kayo mamawala na pag-asa. ba diba? So, hindi naman na uh, lahat ng nauna, yun yung magiging successful. So, yan. Walang, walang problema kahit sa pong take pa yan. Basta, uh, as long as you're dedicated. Okay? So, then of course, we have the fabricated lie. So, ang uh, lie, uh, what, what you call the fabricated lie, it is also called as the lie of fabrication. So, it is the type of lie that is the most uh, difficult to use. Of course, yung mga fabricated lie. So, alimbawa, you are a uh, 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 nito, a journalist. Okay? So, pwede ka mag, uh, ano yan, very, ano yan, very sensitive. Kasi once na you published uh, an article that is uh, all about lies, of course, makakasuhan ka ng libel, sorry, with libel. Ang red line naman, ang tinatawag natin sa red line, that is misinformation. Uh, it is better known as propaganda in politics. Ang uh, propaganda, it is intended to destroy a political belief or ideology of the person. Propaganda in politics. Gusto niyang sirain yung isang partido, isang party, para maangat yung kanilang party, that is the red line. Halimbawa, uh, lalo na ng election class, uh, very uh, very uso yung tinatawag natin na red line okay sa politics di ba uh, kailangan mas may ilalabas na video yung isang kampo may ilalabas na video yung isang kampo so may yung isang kampo ren may mas better or mas magandang story di ba so that is the red line misinformation ang tawag natin diyan that is the that is uh, intended to destroy the political belief or ideology of the person. That is the red lie class. Nakuha? That is the red line. Then, of course, the malicious lie. Ang uh, malicious lie naman class, of course, it is a chronic, uh, constant lie intended to mislead justice. Diba? So, uh, ano yan? Kapaga uh, gusto mong matakasan ang, ang hostisya. Okay? So, malicious lie. Uh, chronic. Okay, dito tayo. Uh, pakibasa nga si... Uh, uh, after ni to nito after kasi no yung nagbasa kanina si uh, sino si MG MG sorry okay so sino yung sino si MG MG pakibasa uh, how about uh, ano na lang si uh, Ana muna Ana si Guma babalik tayo kay Ana Pakibasa, Ana, ng, ng matching type number 8 natin. Yes, sir. Number 1, Leonard Killer. Number 2, John Red. 3, Angelo Mosso. 4, William Marston. 5, Luigi Galvani. 6, Francis Galton. 7, Anton Ismer. 8, Clive Baxter. 9, Harold Burt. 10, Victorio Binossi. Letter A for B is my Smi Mogra Smi Smi Mo Manometer Smi Mo Manometer C numerical scoring scoring D chemograph E word as a test F breathing pattern G systolic BP race H, hypnotism, I, galvanograph, Jigel, complex test. Okay, so yan. Yeah. So let's answer this one on the next slide dito. Okay, so we have 
of course si uh, Leonard Keeler so si Leonard Keeler so chemograph of course uh, he introduced the chemograph class of course si John Reed naman the guilt complex test naman ang introduce niya si Ang uh, Angelo Mosso yung importance ng fear in detecting deception si William Marston naman Spigmo manometer yung na-introduce ni uh, William Marston si Louis Luigi Galvani, of course, sa Galvanograph. Pwede ba natarong tayo ng Galvanograph? Kasi si Galvano or si Galvani ang nag-produce niyan or nag-introduce niyan. Si Francis Galto naman, Word Association Test Class, what? Si Anton Mesmer, si Hypnotism. Si uh, Cliff Baxter naman sa Numerical Scoring. Si Hadal Birch, uh, Breathing Pattern. And of course, si uh, Bituri Benusi, Systolic Blood Pressure. Or yung tanatawag natin na uh, Respiration. Okay, class, ito yon yung tanatawag natin. Okay, so ito. Okay, so we have the types of liar. Of course, class, we have the different types of liars. Uh, una dyan, we have the panic liars. Ang panic liars, so uh, dito yan. So panics when questioned about his involvement uh, concerning a crime, but immediately denied uh, the truth to avoid the shame or humiliation that it might cause to his family. So, ang panic liars ang tawag natin dyan. Although, meron siyang involvement to the particular crime. Okay? So, meron siyang involvement na sa sacrament. But then again, he choose not to uh, divulge information. So, of course, uh, gusto, ayaw niyang mapahiya yung, yung family niya. Ayaw niyang mapahiya yung tinatawag natin na kanyang, uh, ano, yung kanyang uh, sarili. So, agad-agad uh, sabihin niya na, of course, wala akong uh, involvement dyan. So, ang tawag natin dyan, panic liars class. Okay? Panic liars ang tawag natin dyan. Okay. So, then, of course, uh, we have the occupational liar. Okay? Ang occupational liar class. So, uh, of course, from the word itself, uh, occupational. Uh, wait lang, class. Uh, may punin lang ako. Okay. Okay, again, pag sinabi natin uh, occupational liars, class, of course, uh, they, tell, uh, they tell lies because it's uh, their job. Okay, it's their job to tell lies and deceive other people. That is uh, what they call the occupational liar. Now, uh, that is occupational liar na tinatawag natin. Okay. Okay, so next uh, we have the tournament liar. Ang tournament liar naman, class, okay, uh, that is one who is gratified by telling lies, okay, to mislead others. So, his view of telling lies is one form of contest. Ibig sabihin, kapag nafe-feel niya, class, na mas nananalo siya or mas uh, nakufulfill siya kapag mas marami siyang nasabing mali or mas, ma mas marami siyang mas marami siyang uh, time na magsinungaling kasi his view of telling lies is one form of contest. Ibig sabihin, nag-gratify siya yung gratification niya kapag nagsasabi siya ng, uh, or nagsisinungaling siya, kumaga na fulfill yun sa pagsisinungaling. That is the tournament liar. Nakuha? So that is tournament liar. Then of course, we have the ethnological product, uh, the ethno ethnological liar. Okay, a person trained to lie. Okay, so example, member of intelligence agency. Of course, class, hindi ka talaga magpapahuli dyan kasi once na nagsabi ka ng totoo mong uh, agenda or totoo mong uh, purpose, liba, you belong to the intelligence agency, then kapag nagsabi ka na ganito yung purpose do, ano mangyayari sa iyo, ma-burnout ka, of course, papatiin ka nila. So that is an ethno ethnological liars. Okay? Ethnological liars ang tawag natin siya. Then, of course, we have the uh, psychopathic liar. Ang psychopathic liar class, so individual has no conscience, thus capable of lying to the point of causing death to other people. Kasi psychopathic, ibig sabihin, there are problems or there is a problem sa pag-iisip. Okay, that is psychopathic liar. No conscience. Ibig sabihin, walang konsensya na posible na makakos pa siya ng uh, death to other people. That is psychopathic liar. Ang pathological liar naman, of course, it is a sick person who tells lies simply because he cannot distinguish what is right from what is wrong. 
So pathological liar. It is uh, presumed na hindi siya magsasabi ng totoo kasi kasi hindi niya maintindihan kung ano ba yung tama sa mali. Okay? So yan yung tinatawag natin na pathological liar. Okay? He is a sick person na kailangan ng guidance or kailangan ng um, okay, uh, kailangan natin ng uh, attention. That is pathological liar. Ang black liar naman, uh, that is a type of liar that uh, the one who enjoys pretending. Uh, hypocrite. Okay, di ba? Hypocrite ka. Or hypocrite ka pag sa baba. Ibig sabihin, uh, masaya siya kapag nagsasabi or nagpipretend. Di ba? So, hindi nagsasabi ng totoo, ng totoo. So, that is the black liar. Then, of course, ang white lies naman or white liar, your intention class is to protect someone or ayaw mo na magkagulo, ayaw mo na uh, magkakaroon pa ng problema ba, sa pamilya ninyo. Kapag may sinabi yung isang mong kapatid, huwag mo na sabihin sa isa. Kasi of course, to protect someone and ayaw mo na magkaroon ng kaguluhan. So that is a white liar class. Okay, dito sa natin sa matching number 9. Okay, pakibasa nga. Pakibasa si, uh, balik naman tayo kay, ano, kay Hannah. Okay, so ito yung mga active natin na student. Kasi yung iba class nasa, nasa work eh. Okay. Yes, coach. Okay, thank you. Matching 9-1 relevant question, 2 control test, 3 general question test, 4 deception, 5 polygraphies, 6 falsehood, 7 polygraph, 8 poly polygraph, polygraphy, 9 diastolic uh, BP, blood pressure, 10 systolic blood pressure, A deceiving, B lying, C lie detector, D plan or order, E downward br uh, blood, blood pressure, F, I, e, downward blood pressure, F, upward blood pressure, G, many writing, H, related issue, I, stamina, J, innocent response. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, let's answer. <laughs> Wala na kabihin na may kabit. White lies. Kasali ba yun? <laughs> so, yan. Okay, so let's answer class. Tanda niyo pag sinabi natin relevant question, ibig sabihin, Yung question na yan, it is related to the issue or it is related to the case. So, ano ba, uh, you killed the, uh, uh, ikaw ba yung pumatay? Or you killed the Mr. A? So, that is relevant question. Ibig sabihin, that is related to the issue or to the, to the case on matter. While ang control test naman, ibig sabihin, that is the question class intended for an innocent person. While ang general question test, Ang general question class or the GQT, ibig sabihin, that is plan order. Ibig sabihin, yung, uh, meron ka ng pre-selected questions. Uh, 1 to 10, then of course, hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa number 5 kung hindi ka pa or hindi mo pa tanong yung number 1. That is the general question test. Ang um, deception naman class, of course, uh, uh, that is a, uh, a way or that is a way of uh, deceiving. Okay, so, or lying. So, yan yung tanatawag natin na deception. Then, uh, we have the uh, uh, polygraphist. Ang polygraphist natin, class, of course, tanatawag rin natin yan na examiner. The polygraph examiner or the psychophysiologist. Okay? Then, of course, the falsehood, of course, lying. Ang uh, polygraph, many writing. Kasi ang poly, which means many or several. And graph naman, uh, writing. So that's why we have many writing. Ang uh, polygraphy, of course, that is a science of detecting deception or that is a science to, uh, to determine whether the person is telling the truth or telling the lies. That is uh, polygraphy. Pag sinabi naman natin diastolic, okay, diastolic blood pressure, it is a downward blood pressure. Again, that is the downward blood pressure. Ang systolic blood pressure naman, of course, that is the upward blood pressure. Systolic. Nakuha? Okay, so yan. Okay, of course, class, this is the machine. So, of course, ako yan. Okay, so diba? Tingnan niyo ang itsura ko dyan. <laughs> okay, so that is the uh, the machine class. Of course, ito yung old class na machine natin sa polygraph. Ito yung bago. Ito yung uh, digital Okay, kaya dati ang tracing, ito yung tracing natin class. Okay, medyo mahirap pa. Ngayon, ito na yung tracing na lumalabas. Pwede mo na agad-agad i-print yan sa printer unlike before, di ba na hindi? Okay, so of course class, ito yung tinatawag natin na P1. Okay, so then of course uh, P2, we have the Carjo and of course we have the Galvano, yung GSR natin. 
Of course, uh, diyan natin tinitingnan ka. So, of course, ito yon yung uh, ito yung uh, ano natin, yung Numo 1, Numo 2, Galvano yung sa gilid. Then, of course, we have the Galvanic Skin Reflex. Kung titingnan ninyo class, ito yung uh, kaklase ko before. Of course, merong, uh, that is the general question test. Ibig sabihin, yung mga tanong is in a planned order. Meron na, 1 to 10, nakalagay na. Okay? So, yan yung tanatawag natin na machine class. Okay? Kung hindi, nyo, hindi pa kayo nakakita. Okay, so dapat yung uh, ano yan. Okay, so ang machine natin class, tandaan niyo sa pneumograph, okay? So, of course, detect changes in respiration. That is color blue, okay? Blue color. Ang P1 natin class, that is makikita natin sa chest or thoracic. Ang P2 naman, that is abdominal, okay? Abdominal. So, ang uh, rubber convoluted tube, yung uh, tinatawag natin na 10 inches corrugated rubber attached to the body of the subject. Kung titignan niyo yung class, kung tinanong sa board exam, what is the size? Ito, yung uh, rubber co convoluted tube, yung uh, ayan, okay, that is 10 inches, okay, 10 inches long. Ang uh, uh, rubber co convoluted tube class in a geograph, okay? So again, ang color niya is uh, blue. Then ang uh, beaded chain, okay, ang beaded chain class that is used to lock the rubber convoluted tube. Yung sa likod yan, doon yung lock niya, beaded chain na tawag natin yan. Then ang uh, pneumograph that is also known as uh, spirograph, okay? Spirograph, yung other term for pneumograph. Then of course, ang word na pneumo kasi, okay, it is defined as air, lungs or respiration, kasi nang galing yung pneumo sa prefix word na pneumonia. Okay, are you familiar with pneumonia? Of course, that is a uh, disease that caused by bacterial infection or bacterial or viral infections that inflame the lungs. Okay, nagkakaroon tayo ng pneumonia. Okay, so yan. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng pneumograph sa breathing or respiration. So yan. Blue color class ang tinatawag natin ng pneumograph. Then, pag sinabi natin cardiospemograph, it detects uh, the changes in the blood pressure. Okay? It detects the changes in blood pressure and the pulse beat. Of course, class, ang kanyang tracing, that is red color. Ang uh, speed manometer naman, eh, yung speed manometer natin, it measures the beating of the heart or pulse plus manometer, a device for measuring pressure and tension. It was intended by Carl Samuel Ritter von Quash. Okay, yung speed mo manometer. Okay, yung blood pressure cup, of course, uh, alam na lang yung blood pressure cup, it is attached to the upper right arm of the subject. So, balikan natin para makita ninyo ang cardiospemogram. Okay, ito yung tanatawag natin na uh, handcuff class. Okay, so ito yan. Okay, yung para madit yung sa changes, yung sa blood. Okay, so, so yan. Okay, then uh, of course, let's continue with this uh, next atin. Okay, balikan natin po lang. Okay, so tanda nyo, we have the recording pen unit that is 5 inches length. Again, recording pen unit. Ang air pump naman, yung uh, ginaganon-ganon. Okay, so yung uh, air pump class, it is applied the air to the system para malaman natin kung ano yung kanilang uh, blood pressure. Okay, so yan. Then, of course, si uh, Dr. Nikolai Korotko, siya yung nakadiscover between the systolic blood pressure and the systolic blood pressure. Okay. Then, of course, yung cup-based, uh, it was intended by Scipion Rivarochi. Okay. So, yan yung cup-based. Then, uh, next tayo, we have the 120 uh, over 80. So, that is the normal blood pressure. Uh, kapag may encounter yung class, yung tanatawag natin na MMHG. What is that uh, mean? Okay, ano ibig sabihin ng MMHG? Ano ibig sabihin ng MMHG sa sa cap base? Okay, ano ibig sabihin yan? Okay, so MMHG, that is, tandaan nyo, that is uh, millimeter of mercury. Again, ang tawag natin dyan, kapag uh, ano, ah, tinanong sa boring sum yan, ang MMHG, that is millimeter of mercury. That is sa uh, blood pressure natin. Okay, 120 over 80. Okay, nakuha. Then we have uh, 60 to 100. That is the normal heartbeat or pulse rate per adult per minute. While ang uh, sa, ano naman, sa children naman, 70 to 100. That is the normal heart heartbeat or pulse rate for children per minute. Okay, so nakuha. 
Then, of course, yung heart rate natin, guys, that is also known as the pulse rate. The number of times a person heart beats per minute. Okay, yan yung tinatawag natin na heart rate. Ang blood pressure, that is a measurement of the force of the blood against the walls of the arteries. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng blood pressures. Kaya kapag masyadong mabilis, it will cause you to death. Okay, so we have the parts of the body to measure heart rate. Of course, class, sa wrist natin, sa in, uh, inside the elbow, inside the neck, then the top of the foot. So yan yung mga, yung mga heart rate natin. O saan natin makikita? Yung body parts to measure the heart rate. So yan. Then we have the galvanograph. So kung uh, ang cardio, red tracing, ang new mo, blue tracing, ang galvano naman, class, that is a green color tracing. So, of course, ang galvano, ang measure natin is the skin resistance of the subject. So, we have the finger electrode assembly consists of, of course, number one. So, we have the finger electrode plate and retainer bond, yung nilalagay dito. So, that is attached to the left index finger and ring, uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, ring finger. And, of course, uh, we have the uh, left index finger of the subject. Then we have the connect connecting plug. Ang connecting plug, it is designed to attach the system to the machine. Yung ipupush mo doon. So that is uh, what we call the uh, connecting plug. Okay? So, yeah. Okay. Then, of course, uh, we have the recording pen unit. Ang recording pen unit class, that is 7 inches long. Okay? So, ang amplifier unit naman, it support the galvanometer in covering the electrical to mechanical current. Ang galvanometer class, yan yung instrument na ginagamit natin to measure the electric current. Ang galvano, it is the indicating or it indicates class that there is or na merong galvanic current. Okay? So, yan. That is the galvano. Then, we have the galvanic electricity. Ang galvanic electricity produces the chemical reaction towards your body. Okay? So, galvanic electricity. Si uh, Luigi Galvani, he is an Italian physician and physicist, of course, pioneers of bioelectricity class, so on the animal tissue. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng bioelectricity. Of course, class, si Luigi Galvani, kaya nagkaroon tayo ng galvanometer. Okay, uh, it was credited before him, yung galvanometer. Ang chemograph naman, again, it is a motor, or it is a motor that drives the polygraph paper, Again, ang tawag natin sa polygraph paper class, that is a polygraph. Okay? Polygraph. So, ang uh, chart na tawag natin class, yung chart, kung, uh, yung uh, for permanent record, that is approximately 100 feet. Ang synchronous motor, ibig sabihin, that is uh, synchronous, ibig sabihin, tuloy-tuloy, to run the chart paper at the uniform rate speed. Okay? So, yan. Then, pag sinabi kasi natin chemo, it means uh, wave. Plus, graphia means writing. Kaya it is a called a chemographion. Okay? Chemographion. Okay? So, yeah, To write from the wave. Okay? So, chemographion. Si Carl Ludwig naman, he invented the chemograph or to monitor yung tanatawag natin na blood uh, pressure. Okay? So, yan. Yeah, uh, Carl Ludwig. Okay? Then, of course, we have the pen and inking system. Ang trabaho na naman talaga, class, ng pen and inking system or the PIS is to provide uh, permanent records of the test. Again, to provide permanent records of the test, that is the pen and inking system. Okay, so tanda niyo class, ang tawag na natin sa polygraph test uh, examination, ang tawag natin yan ngayon is the psychophysical detection of deception. Again, ang tawag natin sa polygraph test, uh, is the uh, psychophysical detection of deception. Kung hindi nyo alam, uh, aside sa polygraph examiner, ang tawag natin sa polygraph examiner is forensic psychophysiologist. Again, forensic psychophysiologist ang tawag natin sa polygraph examiner. Okay, so yan. So yan. Then of course, we have very important na uh, ano dito. So we have the polygraph operation procedures and then, of course, we have the attachment. Okay, so again, ang una natin na i-attach class, yung P2. Okay, of course, sa abnomen yan. Sa abnomen natin yung first na i-attach ha, sa P2. Ang next natin na i-attach class is what we call the thoracic or yung P1. Okay, so yan yung P1. Diba, ang P2 sa uh, 
sa abdomen or sa chest. Ay, sa larga. Okay, so mamaya i-explain natin sa inyo. Then, ang uh, HPC system is to be attached. Ibig sabihin yung, uh, yung sa blood uh, handcap natin dito. Okay, then of course, uh, GSR ang pinakalas. The GSR component is the last to be attached. And of course, the first to be detached after the, the polygraph test. Tandaan niyo. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na uh, polygraph operation procedure. Ang first natin na, na i-attach class si P2, yung sa abdomen. Ang next natin na i-attach si thoracic, yung P1. Ang kasunod, yung handcuff. Okay? Yung, yung cardio. Ang last, of course, the GSR or the galvanic skin reflex. So, ang first natin na i-attach is the uh, P2, right? Ang last natin na i-attach si uh, GSR. Kung sino yung last natin na in-attach class, siya rin yung first natin to be detached. Okay? Number four will be number one procedure and follow. Ibig sabihin class, yung GSR na nilagay natin uh, last, siya yung first natin na i-detach kapag i-remove natin after the polygraph test examination. Nakuha niyo? Okay, so yun yung uh, detachment or disattachment class or removal or the polygraph test. Of course, pag sinabi natin false positive, the response of a truthful person is determined to be receptive. Okay? Ang false negative naman, the response of a deceptive person is determined to be truthful. So that is the false negative. Okay, so we have the stages of polygraph test class. So una dyan, we have the initial interview. So magkakaroon kayo ng uh, uh, ent uh, preliminary interview or initial interview to get the uh, pertinent information to the conduct of test prior class uh, that is initial. Then we have the pre-test, of course, uh, dyan alamin mo yung condition ng subject for the actual test. That is 20 to 30 minutes yung run ng tinatawag na, na pre-test interview. Gloria. While ang uh, uh, dyan rin class, yung uh, pre-test uh, pre natin, Diyan mo inform ang rights ng subject of his uh, basic constitutional rights. Okay? So dapat uh, hindi makalimutan yung, uh, yung uh, basic constitutional rights ng subject. Then kapag actual test, okay, that's the time. Okay, yan yung experiment, ano na, that is the, uh, what we call the uh, criminalistic type natin or yung actual test. That is the actual conduct of the test of the polygraph examiner. So uh, that's the time rin class, i-attach yung parts ng polygraph machine. Kasi nga again, that is an actual test na tinatawag natin. Okay? Then we have the post-test interview or interrogation. Kapag during the actual test, hindi mo nakuha yung gusto mong kunin na information or na data sa subject mo, magkakaroon ka ngayon ng post-test interview or interrogation. So of course, ang interview... Okay, an interrogation to obtain confession or admission by the subject. So, ang in interview class, of course, when the subject ind uh, indicates an innocent response and very cooperative. So, interview, ang ano mo kasi, uh, ang interrogation naman, of course, when the person uh, shows sign of deception and being uncooperative, ibig sabihin, suspect siya. Si interview naman, innocent response and very cooperative, ibig sabihin, Witness siya. So, yan yung kanatawag natin na interview and interrogation. Okay? So, yan yung kaibahan nila ang dalawa. Then, of course, we have dito tayo mag-end class sa three phases of polygraph examination. So, ang three phases of polygraph examination class, again, pre-test phase. Of course, the examiner will discuss the subject, the test issue. Alibaba, ano yung kaso na kailangan ninyong, uh, kaya, kaya nagkaroon tayo ng kanatawag natin na uh, polygraph test uh, examination. Then, of course, review the question that will be asked. Dapat kasi class, pag before ka mag-conduct ng actual uh, polygraph test, nakaprepare na lahat ng mga sagot ninyo or nakaprepare na lahat ng mga tanong na, isa, na itatanong mo during the actual test. Then, assess the subject emotional and uh, physiological suitability to undergo test. Of course, class, kapag kulang siya sa tulog, or kinakabahan siya, of course, hindi pwedeng i-continue yung test class. Again, dapat i-assess mo ang emotional and physiological suitability to undergo the test, yung subject mo. So that is the pre-test phase. Ang testing phase naman, of course, uh, you will uh, determine the physiological responses yung uh, 
and of course it will be recorded kasi of course testing phase parang actual na yan okay so yan yung uh, three phases then post test naman review the test data obtained and of course enter bread the polygraph test result so yan yung tatlong phases class ng polygraph examination natin okay dito tayo pala class mag end Okay, so ako na lang. So before tayo mag-end, so dito tayo. Okay. Okay, so pag sinabi nating response latency class, kapag meron tayong tinatawag na response latency, there is a science of will. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya consistent sa kanilang mga sagot. Ibig sabihin, there is a sign, there is a symptoms na nagtatrabaho or nag, uh, nagsisnungaling siya. That is the response latency. Ang pre-employment test naman class, That is the uh, pre-employment test, of course, kapag you apply for a job, you apply for a uh, position, of course, kailangan mo talaga class uh, mag, uh, sabi para matest long, yung loyalty mo sa company na yan uh, before kanila i-hire or hindi. Ang um, coloration of the face class, ibig sabihin, uh, ibig sabihin that is, uh, it indicates the lying movement. Uh, namumula ka, hindi ka naman maputi, pero bakit uh, namumutla ka? That is coloration of the face. That is a sign of not telling the truth. Then we have the non-verbal clues. Ibig sabihin, that is duration of time. Uh, si sticker naman, class. Of course, si uh, galvanograph na yung na-introduce. Ang um, very good naman, psycho, uh, galvanic skin reflex or the GSR. Si Richard O. Arthur, siya yung nag-introduce, uh, class, ng two galvanic skin reflex. Yung nilalagay sa ring finger and index finger. Ang uh, unigraph, that is the precursor of the polygraph machine, class. Ang uh, Pinocchio effect, di ba? Kapag uh, uh, si Pinocchio, nakapanagay ng Pinocchio, yung reddish nose, na nagsasabi that kapag mag-red or lumaki yung ilong mo, nagsis nagsisnungaling ka. Then we have the digital polygraph, of course, with the use of the computerized polygraph machine. Okay? So yung pinakita ko sa inyo, yun yung tinatawag natin na digital polygraph class. Hindi na mano-mano, agad-agad after the test, pwede mo na i-print yung uh, tinatawag natin na result of the polygraph test uh, examination. Okay? So, doon na tayo mag-end class with our polygraph um, polygraph discussion. We will, uh, tomorrow we will discuss, uh, pupunta na tayo sa photography. Okay? So, yeah. So, um, tapos na rin natin ang uh, polygraph uh,